His Excellency the President of Iceland, Dr. Gudni Johannesson, the Right Honorable Prime Minister of Iceland, Madam Katrin, President of the International Geothermal Association, Ms. Andrea Blair, World Geothermal Congress Organizing Committee Chair, Dr. Paulson, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Before I proceed, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Rebecca Miano. I am the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Kenya Electricity Generating Company, Kenjen. May I take this opportunity to thank the World Geothermal Congress Organizing Committee for finally holding this event in Iceland. My only question is, what took you so long? Indeed, Iceland has been both a source of inspiration and education to us when it comes to geothermal development. In many ways, Iceland can be said to be a model geothermal country, and for that reason, this was indeed the best choice for this year's event, which is a two-in-one congress, considering we did not have one last year. As many of you may already know, Kenjan is the largest electricity generating company in East Africa, founded in 1954 and has grown over the years, now producing more than 70% of the electricity consumed in Kenya, 86% of which is generated from renewable sources. With an installed capacity of 1,818 megawatts, Kenjan largely relies on natural resources and renewable energy to generate electricity, ranging from hydropower at 45%, geothermal 39%, wind at 1%, and some thermal plants at 15%. The green energy agenda is one we are committed to, and this is why I am delighted and honored to speak to all of you today during this official opening session of the World Geothermal Congress 2020 plus one, which will focus on global energy and climate action. In my country, Kenya, the geothermal potential is estimated at about 10 gigawatts within the Kenyan rift with over 23 geothermal prospects and even fields. Kenya's geothermal installed capacity is about 865 megawatts, and the country is today number eight in the global geothermal generation ranking. Ladies and gentlemen, climate change is one of the biggest threats facing the earth today. The human impact on climate change has been attributed largely to development globally the use of unclean energy represents by far the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions. About two-thirds of global greenhouse gas emissions are linked to combustion of fossil fuels for energy. Climate change impact has been experienced by all sectors of the economy and communities in various parts of the globe. In Kenya, we experienced prolonged hydrological drought leading to electricity shortages some years back. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenya under the Paris Agreement committed to tackling climate change and pledged to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 32% by 2030. Geothermal is one of the green sources of energy suited to tackle climate change. Unlike hydropower, geothermal is not affected by the vagaries of weather. It has good track record of sustainable production and the ability to produce baseload power on a 24-hour basis. Being a clean source of power generation, geothermal energy can play a major role in decarbonizing the power sector and increasing the world's energy security and access to all in line with UN SDG number seven. Some of the, new, the notable advantages of geothermal that make it the preferred source of energy and competitive compared to other sources of energy include the following. Number one, it is environmentally friendly. Geothermal energy is more environmentally friendly than conventional fuel sources such as coal and other fossil fuels. Number two, it is a baseload energy and unlike other sources of energy, e.g. hydro and solar, Geothermal is not reliant on climate or weather patterns. Number three, geothermal energy is naturally replenished because it is green and renewable. 
And number four, geothermal power plants are relatively bigger in capacity than other sources of energy like hydro, solar, diesel-powered power plants. This therefore gives a competitive employee per megawatt ratio, making it attractive to invest and develop. Yeah. AFDB estimates Africa's electricity access rate at about 40%, with over 645 million people with no access to electricity. Annual power consumption per capita in sub-Sahara Africa is the lowest of all continents, estimated at 180 kilowatt hours. This is significantly lower than Europe at 6,500 kilowatt hours and 13,000 kilowatt hours in the United States. The level of development is also quite low with a GDP per capita of 1,590 US dollars in 2018 according to the World Bank source. This clearly illustrates the linkage between energy access, people productivity, economic growth, and quality of life. Our collective goal, therefore, must be universal or 100% access to electricity in the foreseeable future. This would surely change the socio-economic landscape in the continent and significantly reduce poverty levels. And looking forward to the next decade, ladies and gentlemen, we notice that there is a bigger role for geothermal. Taking the case of Kenjan, the company embarked on a sustainability-driven transformation strategy to address the challenges of climate change by the provision of safe, reliable, quality, and competitively priced electric energy in East African region as envisaged in the company's vision. Some of the green energy initiatives that have been adopted and planned by Kenjan on climate action include, number one, accelerated geothermal development, and this is a mitigation action to climate change. Kenjan has a long list of geothermal projects in the pipeline. Number two, we have innovative technology, for example, cooling technology, transformation from the mechanical draft to hybrid cooling tower for geothermal power plants to minimize electric power output and further reduce emission of any remaining greenhouse gases is threefold. Number two, we have the wellhead technology. Kenjan, through its ingenuity and innovation focus, has pioneered the wellhead generation technology that helps bring power faster than awaiting conventional power plants that take longer to build. Now we are generating 18.3 megawatts using this wellhead technology. We also have in the field of innovation technology directional drilling. Directional drilling of geothermal wells and multiple drilling on a single well pad has helped in reducing our footprint significantly. The company is credited with directional drilling of the largest geothermal well in Africa with a capacity of 30 megawatts. And on global partnership in tackling climate change, Kenjan is a participant member of the United Nations Global Compact, which is an excellent platform to advance our corporate sustainability agenda. The strategy realization has extended to commercial geothermal drilling with partners like Ethiopia and Djibouti and capacity building through detailed geoscientific studies in Rwanda and Sudan and well as reconnaissance service in Comoros and Zambia. I'm glad to note that Kenjan has registered six clean development mechanism projects under the UNFCCC with potential emission reduction of 1.5 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent annually, while the sale of the certified emission reductions generated by the projects has boosted the production of clean energy in the country. 10% of the proceeds have been used in the implementation of sustainable community benefit projects. And apart from being a reliable source of electricity, the geothermal source is today being utilized for many other uses. For example, Kenjan has developed the only geothermal spa in Africa, which has significantly grown 
the geothermal tourism in Olkaria, and also the general Naivasha area. At industrial level, we have alternative use of geothermal because the brine and steam is used for horticulture and agriculture. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I am glad to note that there is hope. We have seen recent reports on technology that hint to a possibility of producing geothermal anywhere in the world. Indeed, from our experience, we know that with improved drilling technology and geoscientific studies capacity, it is possible to improve the chances of harnessing geothermal energy from the Earth's crust. Ladies and gentlemen and participants, to hasten deployment of cleaner energy solutions, there is need to address challenges facing exploitation of geothermal resources through a shift to a more holistic policy framework and more coordinated approach across all energy sectors and countries through partnerships. With those remarks, thank you very much and may God bless you.